Hi, I'm James Bornholt from Amazon Web Services. I'm going to tell you about how we've been using lightweight formal methods in the development of a new storage node for Amazon S3. Amazon S3 is a cloud object storage service, holding over 100 trillion objects and offering customers a simple put and get interface to store and retrieve their data. Under the hood, S3 is a complex distributed system with more than 300 microservices. But today, we're going to focus on the service that stores customer object data. We do that by replicating object data across a fleet of what we call storage nodes, which are each single host key value stores. We're in the process of deploying the next generation of our storage node software called ShardStore, a new single host key value store that we built in Rust. Today, ShardStore stores hundreds of petabytes of customer data as part of a gradual rollout within the existing S3 data plane. Because ShardStore is responsible for durably storing customer object data, its correctness is critical. But production quality storage software is notoriously difficult to get right. We need to combine ShardStore's soft updates-based crash consistency protocol with high concurrency and optimizations to improve latency and throughput. This means that ShardStore's implementation is both complex and frequently changing. Today, it's over 40,000 lines of Rust code, and we deploy our changes worldwide every week. Faced with these complexities, we decided to apply formal methods to the development of ShardStore. Our goal was to validate deep correctness properties of the implementation code. While we're inspired by recent successes in fully verified storage systems, there were two problems that we needed to solve to use formal methods for ShardStore. First, we needed to find a way to integrate formal methods into our day-to-day -day engineering practice. Our engineers shouldn't have to wait until a separate team of formal methods experts are able to validate a change or a new feature. And second, we needed an approach that could validate ShardStore's correctness not just today, but in the future as well. We wouldn't have considered this work a success if every future change to ShardStore required a fresh consultation with formal methods experts. To address these challenges and use formal methods at scale, we developed an approach based on lightweight formal methods, which are techniques that focus on automation and ease of specification. Our approach has three steps that we think can work for your systems too. First, we distill the expected behavior of ShardStore components as executable reference models that we then use as specifications. Then we decompose our correctness properties and use a suite of automated formal methods tools to check them against the models and the implementation code. Finally, we use coverage tools and other mechanisms to make sure that these checks remain effective over time. This approach does not achieve the same strong guarantees as other fully verified systems because of our strong bias towards lightweight, automated, and integrated techniques. And in particular, it's possible to miss bugs with our approach alone. We're excited about future work to bridge the gap between our effort and full automated verification. The paper has more detail about these limitations, as well as an overview of ShardStore's design and examples of the concrete issues that we were able to find using this approach. But for now, let me tell you a little bit more about how we applied formal methods to ShardStore. The first question we have to answer for any formal methods project is how do we get a specification of the expected behavior? In other words, how do we know what the system is supposed to do? We wanted specifications that would live alongside the code and be updated by engineers so that our validation would continue working for future code changes. So to define our specifications, we write what we call reference models. These are small, executable specs written in Rust that live alongside the code. For example, the reference model for a log-structured merge tree is a hash map. They both have the same put and get interface, they both have the same semantics, but the hash map doesn't have to worry about performance or space usage or memory efficiency or any of the other implementation concerns. We write a reference model for each shard store component, both the front-end APIs that we present to the rest of S3 and internal components such as extent management, indexing, and I.O. scheduling. We also reuse our reference models as mocks for unit testing, which makes them much easier to maintain. As our engineers write new unit tests, they're incentivized to also update their reference models, so they're implicitly updating the specification. This approach to specification is lightweight, 
and it's usable by engineers, as we'll see in some data towards the end of the talk. Once we have a specification in the form of a reference model, how do we then check that the implementation satisfies the spec? On the surface, this might seem simple. We just want the implementation to conform to the specification, or more precisely, we want the implementation to refine the specification. But this requirement is too strong in the face of two forms of non-determinism that real storage systems face. First, crashes can cause data loss that the strong reference model specification doesn't account for. Second, concurrency allows operations to overlap, making it difficult to check conformance while concurrent operations are in flight. We found it useful to decompose our desired correctness property into three parts and reason about each part separately. For sequential crash-free ex executions, we check refinement directly. For sequential crashing executions, we extend the reference models to define which data can be lost after a crash and then check a weaker refinement property. And finally, for concurrent executions, we check linearizability against a sequential reference model. This decomposition also lets us check each of these properties with a different automated approach, helping us with our goal of being lightweight while still achieving good coverage of potential bugs. Let me give you just one example of how we check these properties. For sequential executions, we turn to property-based testing as a way to test the behavior of the system on many scenarios and validate that its behavior conforms to the reference model. The idea of property-based testing is to generate random inputs to a test case and check that the user-provided property holds. For us, the inputs are sequences of operations, and the property is that when those operations are executed on both the reference model and the implementation, the two agree with each other. And so we start with some initial state of both the reference model, think of like an empty hash map, and of the implementation. For the implementation, we run the entire shard store software stack against an in-memory disk. So we're effectively starting with an empty disk and a freshly booted shard store. Then we run each operation in the sequence against both the model and the implementation. For example, a put updates the model's hash map with a new entry, and then executes the put handler of the implementation which might do some disk IO, or maybe it just buffers some state in memory to be flushed out later on. At every step, we compare the two systems and check that they satisfy some invariants. For example, that they both reflect the same key value mapping. We can also run background operations like garbage collection. These are no ops in the reference model because garbage collection doesn't affect the key value mapping that we store, but they let us validate that the implementation of these operations doesn't corrupt any state. One important advantage of property-based testing, and actually of all the lightweight techniques that we use, is that they're what we call pay-as-you-go. They allow us to run the checks for longer or to run more tests to increase our confidence and correctness. We use this flexibility to scale our checks from running automatically on an engineer's laptop to being distributed in the cloud. The paper has more details on how we also extend property-based testing to handle crashes and how we incorporate different techniques to reason about concurrency. Finally, let me tell you a little bit about our experience with these techniques. We found that in addition to preventing issues from reaching production, these lightweight automated techniques are extremely effective at preventing issues from even reaching code review. Anecdotally, engineers find many more issues just by running these checks against their local changes, which both catches bugs earlier in development and helps them iterate more quickly on new designs or new optimizations they're considering. We've also found that lightweight techniques, tightly integrated into the code, are maintainable. About 20% of the models and checks that we've talked about today have been written by non-formal methods experts. And about a third of the engineers on the shard store team have written their own models or their own checks without any involvement from formal methods experts. The biggest takeaway for us has been that this pay-as-you-go and continuous validation approach makes it possible to integrate formal reasoning into a production engineering process. Pay-as-you-go means that we can scale our checks from local engineer laptops to the cloud as the changes get closer to production, reducing the upfront cost of validating a new change. Continuous validation means that we can increase confidence not only in shard store today, but in the future as it changes and evolves over time. We want to get to a world where future changes don't have to involve a formal methods expert at all. 
So that's our experience using lightweight formal methods in production for Shardstore, the new storage node backend for Amazon S3. We're excited to keep advancing our use of formal methods for critical parts of S3, and to continue increasing the strength of the guarantees that we can provide in an automated fashion. We're also hiring both for full-time and intern positions. So this kind of work, putting formal methods into production is exciting to you. Either drop us an email or just get in touch with me. Thank you.